that's the top of the building and it's got damage to the studio. Four of finest scholars yeah. ever to have passed through this country's ranks. I'll go through them with you quickly from left to right. There are John Milton, Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Isaac Newton, and the one on the far right with the football wearing the Gucci jacket, that's David Beckham. <laughs> Of course, I'm only joking. We all know that David never went to school. That is, of course, William Shakespeare. At this point of the river, though, we approach a place where there's three bridges very closely together. It's, in fact, the closest of any three on the banks of the Thames. The first is the Blackfriars Road Bridge. Look through to the second bridge, though, the one with the red columns. As they come closer, you'll see it has no top. These are the remains of the first ever railway bridge to have spanned the banks of the Thames, the old Alexandra Railway Bridge. Designed by our famous engineer, Sir Lisa Barkeep of Brunel, to service the Dover to Chatham Railway. They took the top of the bridge oh, down because they sought it unfit to support the weight of modern day trains. However, they couldn't remove the columns because it had undermined the foundations of the final one of the three, which is the Blackfriars Railway Bridge. And as we pass through, take a little glance across our east skyline. You'll see it's ever changing. All the old historical buildings and places of real character and have been dominated by luxury skyscrapers, office blocks and apartments. The prime example of this, ahead of the city on right, the large glass structure, the tallest building in Western Europe, the Shard, built to resemble a shard of glass. Standing 1,019 feet high, it's made up of blocks of offices, a shopping centre, various hotels, bars, restaurants and luxury apartments, and also situated right up on the 77th floor is a viewing gallery they call The View from the Shard. Very original. Also to our right, the large brown brick building with a tall chimney in the centre. That's the old Bankside Power Station, which 22 years ago was bought up and converted into the Tate Modern Art Galleries. You can go in there and see such magical exhibits as half a cow in a plastic box. An unmade teenager's bed. A light that feeds itself on and off 24 hours a day. Eight years ago, they spent nearly £30,000 on a jar of poo. The building is absolutely free to enter, and after walking around it for about half an hour, you do seem to realise why. <laughs> As we approach the Millennium Footbridge, dominating the skyline to our left, a real work of art. The magnificent dome and golden cross of St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul stands 365 feet high, which is easily remembered for being a foot for every day of the year. The dome of St Paul's weighs 64,000 tonnes and is the second largest unsupported cathedral dome in the world, the largest being that of St Peter's in the Vatican City of Rome. And then here to our right, the white building with the thatched roof on top. This is the first wooden building to be built in the city since the Great Fire of London, the new Globe Playhouse Theatre. It was the life's work and dream of an American actor and director from Boston who went by the name of Sam Wanamaker. He raised the funds and designed the plans for the project, but sadly he died a couple of years before its completion. So his daughter, the actress, Zoe Wanamaker, you may know her from programs like Love Hurts, My Family, I think she was also in a few of the Harry Potter films as well. She took over the project, and the Globe, believe it or not, was 28 years old back in November. Hard to believe it's been there that long. Now the next bridge ahead of us, this is the Southern Road Bridge. Uh, the least used and loneliest of all of London's road bridges, that being because the approach roads to it are so narrow and hard to find. They do say if you actually see anyone walking across the bridge, give them a wave because they're more than likely lost. But as we do approach the bridge closer, take a look over here to your right. By the green gates here, you'll see a set of steps that lead down to a cobblestone causeway. These are famously known as Wren Steps. That's where Sir Christopher Wren used to walk down daily to all the waterman's vessel of old and then cross over to the construction site at St Paul's Cathedral. They're more commonly known these days as the Southern Causeway, but they're also in folklore known as Nancy Steps, because it was said to be where in the Charles Dickens novel Oliver, Bill Sykes did a lot of his courting with the lady of the same name. There's a royal charter upon those steps on your right, saying they can never ever legally be removed. But as we pass through the bridge, again to your right, you'll see there's a place on the shore here where there's quite a lot of people enjoy themselves. And there's only one place you'll find like that in London with the sun shining, and that is of course a pub. <laughs> That's the anchor of Bank Site, one of the oldest pubs on the banks of the Thames. Passing that building date back over 400 years. 
and it was in the original structure where famously Shakespeare and his players used to get changed. Good lads to act at plays in that old road, which once stood somewhere behind the pub in a place called Park Street. And if you're a bit sceptical and you don't believe me how old the pub is, take a look to the gold anchor sign at the top of the building. If you look very closely to the bottom left hand corner of that sign, you'll see written in black, it says built 1615. The next bridge we pass beneath is the Allen Street Railway Bridge. The first railway crossing was stuck in the Queen of the Thames before we had the Allen Street Railway Station. It's the last building to my left, the two Victorian bell towers at either side. But as we pass through the bridge, here to your right, just next door to this pub called the Old Thames Siding, you'll see a small dock entrance. That is the St Mary Overy Dock. And in there, you'll see a black ship with some scaffolding around. Now, have any of you on board ever seen the film The Pirates of the Caribbean? Show of hands. Anyone seen that film? Yeah, good stuff. Well, that ship there on your right hand side has absolutely nothing to do with that film whatsoever. <laughs> that is a replica of Sir Francis Drake's old galleon, The Golden Hind. That version of the Hind has circumnavigated the world twice, which is once more than the original, following the exact steps that Drake took under the secret orders of Queen Elizabeth I. And also, for any of our American cousins on board today, continue looking to your right hand side. In the gap between the last two buildings here, you'll see there's a church. This is the Southern Cathedral, home to the famous Harvard Chapel. That's where Sir John Harvard, one of the co founders of the Harvard University in Massachusetts, was in fact baptized. He was the son of a local butcher. And the next bridge ahead of us, the fourth one to span this site, the New London Road Bridge. Now, the first bridge that was built here by the Romans way back in 1843 was set to the and it didn't. It was actually pulled down on top of the Iranian Bible Fleet. The second bridge was down during the Great Fire of London. The third bridge was fully down, so we saw it to other friends in the South from the Iranian Bible it was laid in that stone by stone, then shifted across the Atlantic to where it now spans the Bad Lake Lake, like Havasu in the Amazon Desert. Also to our left, in the gap between the first two buildings there, you will see this tall stone column with the golden ball of flame in the top. That is Sir Christopher Wren's monument to the Great Fire of London. The monument stands 202 feet high, and it's said it went in an easterly direction, which is the direction we're travelling in. It would strike the exact spot where the Great Fire was said to have started, that being a small baker's shop in Brooded London. Also to our left, the Yellow Brick Building. That's one of the oldest buildings in the the city. It's the original Billingsgate Fish Market. There was a fish market famously registered on that site for over a thousand years.